<laughs> All right, Ben. We were just talking about this before with the timeline, and I know I've, I've been following you as well with this immigration fiasco this week as far as the media and its handling of it. Here's the deal. Like we talked about, Donald Trump makes some mistakes, but do, do people think that we can't Google this and see which policy this was, when it was signed, how it's being enforced? Explain for people who don't believe me, because I don't have that much credibility today, the timeline. <laughs> So the timeline is that in 1997, the Clinton administration signed an agreement called the Flores Agreement uh, with a bunch of advocates for illegal immigrants. And the Flores Agreement, the settlement agreement, uh, basically suggested that parents, that, that unaccompanied minors who come to the southern border could not be held in custody for longer than 20 days. Right. In 2014, 2015, there's this big wave of migrants that comes up to the border with kids, as parents with kids, and the Obama administration decides they want to hold the parents and the kids there together. And they actually called it a deterrent at the time. Jay Jackson, uh, who is, Jay Johnson rather, who is the head of DHS, uh, he said at the time, this is a deterrent policy designed to keep people from coming to the United States. There's a lawsuit filed against that policy of keeping the children with the parents together in detention on the basis of the Flores settlement, the Ninth mm -hmm. Circuit Court of Appeals rules that if you arrest the parents, you cannot keep the kids in custody longer than 20 days. The kids have to be released out of custody. They cannot be held with the parents. So Trump comes along and he says, listen, we're not going to just catch and release these people anymore. So what Obama did in response was he basically said, okay, we're not going to arrest anyone. People right. are going to come across the border with their kids. We're just going to hold them for a second, then we'll release them, uh, and then we will trust them to come back. Well, this resulted in a very high rate of people not showing up for court, as you would imagine. Something like four <laughs> in ten people not showing up for court. They just disappear into the interior. Yeah, I know. So it's like Los Angeles traffic tickets, only like with all felonies. Calendars. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. So in 2017, 2018, the Trump administration makes clear they are now going to put into place the no tolerance policy, the zero tolerance policy, where everybody who comes across the border illegally will now be prosecuted as an illegal immigrant. If you want to apply for asylum, you go to a point of entry, no problem. Problem. You want to try and immigrate legally, you go to a point of entry, no problem. You try to cross the border where there is no border patrol, and they will arrest you and they will charge you criminally. And what that means is that thanks to that reenactment of the Flores settlement under 2016 Ninth Circuit law, once you arrest the parents, you cannot keep the kids in custody with the parents. They right. must be separated by policy. So it wasn't that Trump was like, you know what, let's grab these families and then separate out the kids because I hate children. They're the worst and I want to murder them. No, what it specifically really brown is, children. Specifically every... brown children, as we've been told. Exactly. When when it's just like the Nazis. <laughs> Instead, what it really was was it was going to be President Trump arresting everyone who comes across the border, and if the natural after effect of that is the kids can't be held in custody, then they're separated for a given period of time until they are deported as a family. If they apply for asylum, that time is a little bit longer. Right. Uh, and if they are they don't apply for asylum, then the court process moves pretty quickly for deportation. The kids get deported alongside the parents. The media instead proclaim, this is Japanese internment, this is Nazi policy, it's brand new. Now, the way that you know this was absolute crap, the way that you know this was absolute crap is not only because the Obama administration did it, but also because when the, when the Trump administration does it, then the suggestion is if they separate the families, this is the worst thing ever, right? You got Rachel Maddow weeping openly on television. Yeah. But if they bring the She's families back together in detention, then the suggestion is that this is inhumane. So if you separate the families, it's inhumane and Nazi ask. If you bring the families together, it's like the Japanese internment camps, meaning the only solution the left has proposed here is just release everyone back into the general society, right. which of course is what they're looking which for. Which is when I ask myself, what would Kevin Spacey do? Uh, I'd probably just enter the cages. Here's the thing. I just said all of the things that Ben Shapiro said in the earlier segment. I just wanted to make sure that you heard it from someone who people believe. Uh, <laughs> would not dress. Source people trust. Yeah, yeah. Source people knows your trust. Um, no, that's exactly right. And, and this is a good example of where I've talked about this, where we do the change my mind. A lot of people go, well, I didn't like this one because you're usually civil. No, I'm not going to be civil based on a lie. And when we talked about build the wall, people started talking about dreamers. People started talking about anchor. What about the kids who are here? I go, okay, uh, everyone obviously is compassionate. But you don't want to deport felons. You want open borders. So before we get that far down the trail to try and find common ground, not Ben, by the way, I'm talking about the people that changed my mind. Before we try and act as though we can find common ground on what to do with children, Let's figure out what we do with the, the bulk of illegal immigration. And, and there is no common ground, and that's what you see right now. It's appeasing crocodiles. Donald Trump separates them, he's a monster. Puts them back together, he's a monster. The only solution is, again, where we have no common ground, open borders completely. Now, I will say that the Trump administration did botch the rollout of this policy in magnificent fashion, as, as per our usual arrangement. The Trump administration <laughs> has, a, has a policy, and the policy is perfectly defensible on the merits. And instead of just rolling out the policy, saying, listen, we have a zero tolerance policy, we'd prefer to change the law so kids can stay with their parents in detention facilities before they are removed en masse. Instead of doing that, he has a bunch of people tried out there to say that he wants to use the separation of the children as a deterrent in and of itself, which is idiotic, yep. and then say, well, we didn't really mean that. What we really meant is we'd like to keep everybody together, and then say, but we can't keep everybody together because the legislature has to solve that, which is correct, 
And but we, the executive branch, can't just sign an executive order getting rid of this, and then after about a week of blowback, say, well, you know, what? we'll sign an executive order and we'll sort of get rid of it and we'll sort of not get rid of it, therefore undercutting the entire legal basis for what you've been claiming for two weeks and making you look malicious and stupid. Like there yeah. is no reason that it had to be rolled out this way. It's the worst rollout of any policy that they've had since the travel ban. Uh, and again, there is there is no rationale for it because again, it, it is perfectly defensible. On the, on the legal merits, you know, as right. a lawyer, on the legal merits, this is a perfectly defensible policy. It is just not defensible to to switch in time all the time. I and, forgot and you, that you, you were a lawyer. I people. thought you were touring with the Russian opera playing violin for a while. But then I remember you were a lawyer. You were my lawyer. Um, That's right. I, I was your lawyer. I, I was I was the ultimate Jew's lawyer. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Now I'm uncomfortable. I feel like uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Um, no, that I, I love Bill Sue. But one thing I definitely I've definitely noticed with you, you find yourself defending the policies of the Trump administration more and more. Well, of course, listen, the, P, the, the PR debacles. But here's the deal. When we talked about this, there are the polls as well, where people don't support. Well, until he signed the executive order, people did not support the separation of families. But people over, well, a plurality of people, I think it was 46 to 37, you probably remember the stat from earlier this week, do support stricter immigration laws and enforcement of borders. So that shows you that there's a disconnect between what Americans want and what they perceive is happening according to the media. And yes, Donald Trump gives them a little bit of a gift. That being said, you can't use it. And this is what the left is doing, taking this debacle and using it to argue for the fact that, well, the laws haven't been enforced, therefore it's a human right to be in the United States of America. Yeah, exactly right. And, and again, the, the tell is pretty obvious here. Ted Cruz says, OK, well, here's a fix. And Chuck Schumer, who five seconds ago was saying this is Japanese internment and Nazism, is saying, well, you know, we're not going to work with you on that fix. We would prefer to hold Trump's feet to the fire. It's like, well, either it's Nazism and you should try to stop it or it's not Nazism and you're just lying about right. it. And it turns out that it's the second. And of course, now that, that the Trump administration has, has signed this executive order, which, by the way, is, is legally vacuous. I mean, there, there, it really is an empty executive order. It either reinstitutes catch, and re reinstitutes catch and release or it doesn't change policy at all from what the Trump administration was already doing. It just kind of puts a nicer face on it. Yeah. But once that But like you're happens, saying, that's kind of what's needed of right now. That's, that is what's needed is a nicer face on it because something needs uh, to be done. You know, I, I disagree with the executive order to the extent that I think that it, I, I think it's foolish because he's not going to win any points with the people who hate him. They're just going to suggest that he is an inhumane monster. Uh, and I also think that it doesn't, it's not operative. Like it's just legally not operative. What he should have done is he should have said, here's a piece of draft legislation I came up with, with, you know, Ted Cruz and whomever else is going to propose this. If Democrats don't support it, it's because they obviously don't want to fix the problem. Right, exactly. Right? That, I, that I think would have been a better PR tactic as opposed to. And it is putting a nice weeks. face on is what I'm saying, because you know the Democrats wouldn't get behind it. Either way, you're putting a nice face on something that has to be done. That would have been a more right. effective I just, way. Right, I, I just don't think that the nice face is going to succeed because you're going to no. have Samantha Bee out there immediately suggesting that the executive order is now about ripping children away from freedom and putting them in jail. Right, this is what she did on her, on her execrable show last night. She, she no. officially won. You know, I, I've had this, this running tally for, for years, this four-way running gun battle for the least funny human being in America. Mm. And it was always between Samantha Bee, Trevor Noah, Lena Dunham, and Amy Schumer. And in the last several weeks, I mean, Samantha Bee is like secretariat. She has just bolted <laughs> away from the pack. It is astonishing.